Good evening, Elvis fans. Uh, my apologies for being away so long, but uh, I am back with this video and I'll be doing another uh, video tonight or tomorrow for my rare RCA records. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is the rarest bootleg records I have. Uh, and again, these are just the ones that I have in my personal collection. I know there are some out there that are more rare or there's some rare ones out there that I don't have. Uh, but I'm, I'm always looking to buy those rare ones that I don't have, but uh, these are just the ones that I have. A uh, question that goes around quite a bit is what makes it rare? Uh, typically sheer numbers. If there's not a lot of them out there, uh, that's pretty rare. Does that mean that it's necessarily valuable? In most cases, yes, but sometimes not, because that's when your supply and demand uh, comes in. You know, you might have a, a pretty rare record that nobody wants. I know there's one on uh, eBay or it has been on there. It's a compilation album and the guy has it listed for like $8,000 because he can find no other copies of it. It's got, I think, one or two Elvis songs on it. Well, it hasn't sold for one of two reasons. Either it's really not that rare or nobody's really looking for it. So he's completely overvalued it. And of course the opposite is true. You know, you can have a record that you think is common that everyone has, and then you find out later, usually after you sold it for next to nothing, that it turns out it was a really rare record. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna do the bootlegs that I have, and I'm gonna start with singles, go to some of the 10 inch stuff that I have, and then the regular LPs. Uh, and these are in no particular order. I'm just going through uh, what I have and what I pulled out. The first one is Please Release Me. Now, what makes this rare is it's the first bootleg single that it was ever made. And that's what it looks like. The other thing is this was not a picture sleeve. This is just an insert, paper insert that was put in. Uh, and then that's what the label looks like just a real plain, you can't really see it on here, but it's yellow uh, and it just says Sun Records on it, not for sale. It's kind of made to look like a promo. There was supposedly only two or 300 of these made. Now there's some speculation that uh, it was done as kind of a promo for the album. So it came out before the album. Uh, some people think that it came out you know, the same time as the album, I don't really know. Uh, and for me, it's really not that important. Uh, it's just a cool item to have because it was the first bootleg single. Uh, so that's pretty rare. You don't see that all the time. Uh, this one is the first one that uh, Paul Dowling did. Uh, it's called the Elvis Presley Radio Special, which it wasn't radio at all. It was uh, TV songs. And this is the first one he did. And it's got a flap on the top. Uh, and real nice picture on the back of Elvis with Tommy and Jimmy Dorsey. And then the label on it is gold. And the vinyl is black. Now there was one that came out that um, one of the books said it was a second pressing. Uh, it wasn't. It was a counterfeit. It's on white vinyl, and they actually did the flap cover on it, uh, but what they didn't put on was radio. So if you've got the one that says Elvis Presley Special, and it's on white vinyl, that's the counterfeit. Now uh, this one, is actually an EP, and I've seen, I think one or two of these for sale. It's super rare, it actually, did really come out in Malaysia. Uh, it's a, got even a gatefold type opening. Uh, they included some photos in here. So uh, it's a really nice package. Really, really well done. And again, it's rare. Uh, you just don't find this one very often, especially with all the photos in it and finding it complete. Um, so that's a pretty rare one. These next few, these were all homemade, and that's why I like them so much. I just think they're cool. 
Now this one's still sealed. Or no, it's not. I'm sorry. Oh no, it is still sealed. Now, I never opened this one. Not just because I'm trying to preserve it for anything. Just never got around to it. But any of these rock and records titles, um, they were all homemade. So it's not a mass produced item by any means, but they are pretty hard to find. I think there are seven or eight of them all together. Uh, so this was the first one that came out. Uh, and then this is the same, I think this is the same one as this one. Uh, he just, for whatever reason, he made a bunch of different covers for the same ones. So, uh, this is the second issue of that one. Uh, then we've got, this was the second one he did, uh, the Hillbilly Cat. And that's what the back of it looks like. Just a really cheap kind of pasted insert. And again, somehow I managed to get this one still sealed. Uh, this is the second cover. So it's the same one as this one, but with a different cover on it. And for a homemade product, I think they're really nice. Uh, this one is an EP. Not the easiest one to find. Got blue labels on it. Uh, that's what the inside looks like. And then the back of it. And again, that's the front. That was an, That's an EP, or two EPs. So uh, not easy to find. It's one of my favorites. And then this is the last in the series. It's got some Louisiana Hayride songs on it. Um, but again, he did make a couple different pressings of this one. This one, the only reason I'm putting it on here is I've never seen this anywhere. It's just interviews. Uh, one is from New Orleans and the other is from Portland, Oregon. Um, and it says volume one. I don't know if there was ever a volume two that was made. Uh, this, like I said, this is just one that I happened to come across. It doesn't have any music on it. It's just interviews that, you know, somebody else might have one. I'm sure there are many more out there. I've just never seen one. So that's why I picked that one up. And then the last of the singles or EPs I have is this one. Elvis, the beginning, it's a double record set. Uh, you open it up and the records are housed inside like that. A uh, couple of kind of cool things. Whoever made it, um, they put it just a little booklet together. It's got four different photos. Elvis performing, studio stuff, that kind of thing. And then it was pressed on gold vinyl. So that's pretty cool. The downside of this is... A lot of people, because there's so many songs on each side, uh, some of people's copies tended to skip because of how many songs they put on each side. Thankfully, mine didn't. The other bad thing is, is you're not actually getting the Sun releases of these songs. You're getting the RCA releases. So they have that fake added echo on them. That said, it's still a pretty rare item. You see them for sale every now and then. Um, but not often. That's why I've got that in my in my rare pile. Uh, these I'm just going to go through quick. A lot of people are going to look at this one and think, oh, that's not a big deal. I've got that one. And a lot of people do. It's pressed on red see-through vinyl. It's a uh, kind of pirated copy or a bootleg of the Christmas special that the Colonel sent out on reel-to-reel -reel tapes. Um, so somebody, some inventive person, put this out on a 10-inch record, which I think is pretty cool. Now, here's another copy. Same cover. That's what the back looks like. The difference is this one is pressed on dark red vinyl, and it's kind of got a marbleized look into it. It's not easy to see, but... Um, there it is. This is probably the second rarest version of that because of the color. Um, this is, I 
think the only one I've ever seen and I snapped it up as soon as I could. Then we get into this one. This is one I just picked up, same cover. Everything is the same on it, front and back. But this one is pressed on blue vinyl. There's another one out there that is pressed on green vinyl. I've seen a picture of it in a book, but never seen it anywhere. Um, the guy that wrote the Bootleg Elvis book said that he knows of three or four, only three or four other collectors that have the blue version. So I don't know how many are out there, but I do know it's super rare. I saw it on eBay, about fell over when I saw it, clicked buy it now because thankfully the guy had it on buy it now. I honestly don't think he knew what he had. Uh, so I snapped it up as soon as I could. Uh, super rare record. If you ever see a blue copy, you know, I would say no matter the price, pick it up because there just aren't that many. If anyone has a green vinyl copy that they would like to sell, let me know. I'm very interested. Uh, now we're going to get into the LPs. Uh, the first one is this notorious record, Rockin' TV 1956. And supposedly there was only 100 of these made. And that's what the back looks like. It's just a cheap insert. Uh, mine was torn, which I don't really care because there was only 100 of these made. So uh, they taped it on the back and then the front comes off like that. The other part of this is the absolute, and I think hideous, vinyl. That's what it looks like. There's no labels, so you kind of have to guess which side you're playing. Um, but that's Rock and TV 1956. Again, supposedly only about 100 copies of these were ever pressed. So uh, not many out there. They typically go for big bucks. Um, I've seen a few since I bought mine. And in all honesty, this is one that I will buy as many copies as I can find, um, just because I think it's so cool. It's so bad, it's cool. Um, so that's it, Rockin' TV 1956. Uh, next one on my list is Please Release Me. This is the first issue, first pressing of this album. And it was also the first bootleg ever done. Uh, so makes it very rare. I think there was only 500 of these pressed. And again, the way you can tell a uh, first pressing real one from the counterfeits is if you see any space between Elvis's butt and the spine of the record, it's a real one. If there's no space between it, then it's a counterfeit. Um, you see these come up for sale from time to time. More often than not, it's uh, the counterfeit. But you do see the the first ones. And uh, that's why I've got it in my collection is just because it was the first one ever done from 1970. And it came from uh, the Netherlands. Uh, the next one is the Monologue LP. Now, this is not the rarest one in the world. And I'll, I'll show you why. I've got this one on here. Um, first pressing of it, and the way you can tell is because uh, the counterfeits or any other pressing, this little, the, the cover here is a paste on sheet. The subsequent copies had everything actually printed on the uh, jacket. So if you've got one that's got the cover pasted on or the photo pasted on, that's the first pressing. And then that's the back. It's it's still somewhat rare. I mean, it's not the rarest one out there. You can find them, um, but it, it's a neat album anyway. Now, I showed you that one to show you this because this is a later pressing. Same record, different cover. Apparently, when the bootlegger who made these uh, pressed the records, he pressed more records than he had covers, so he just grabbed some photos that he had on hand and I'm guessing copied them on a Xerox or something. That's what the back looks like. And supposedly, according to the bootleg book, only 50 of these were pressed. So it's not the record inside because it's the same one as the regular monologue LP, but the cover is what makes it really rare. 
Uh, next one is live experience in Vegas. Uh, they did a second pressing of the of this one, and that's the one where Elvis is wearing the sundial suit. It's a, from a later picture, probably 1970s, or a later concert, probably 1977. But this is the original first issue of this album. And for me, I think the cover is much nicer. Actually, this one, I, uh, he had the flame suit on, I'm sorry. It's the second issue of it. He's wearing the flame suit and he's sitting down. Um, but that, and that's what the back cover looks like. Music is the same. You know, obviously the records are going to be different just because they're different pressings. But this was the original issue of Live Experience in Vegas. Now, the next one is this little gem called Live in Atlanta. Uh, not only is it rare, but it's also probably the ugliest cover done. Uh, nothing on the back whatsoever. So you have no idea what songs are or anything. Uh, FTD just released this from a soundboard recording. Uh, that's the one that, it's the Bruce Jackson book that comes with another, I think, a concert from South Dakota in 1976 and then an interview with Bruce Jackson's brother. So you can get this in better sound. And when I say better sound, this one is one of the worst sounding bootlegs as well as it being just ugly. It was taken originally, whoever uh, made this had filmed the concert with a Super 8 video camera or Super 8, Super 8 film camera. And then it you know, it, there were several generations made and people made cassettes of it. So 90% of the songs aren't complete on this. Uh, and the sound is just absolutely terrible. So uh, now a few years ago, a bunch of these were on eBay. Uh, I think they're all original. And I want to say there was like two or 300 of these pressed. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, this has never been counterfeited. There was never a second pressing done. Uh, so just based on the numbers, it's rare. Don't buy it thinking you're going to get a great listening experience because, like I said, it's like eight generations removed from the original source. So the sound is pretty bad on this one. Uh, the next one is... The King Yesterday and Today. And again, this just came with an insert sheet with the song titles on it. This is a first pressing. Uh, a lot of people don't know that because there was a pressing with, uh, it had an actual photo on the cover. Um, but what had happened was, again, they ran out of jackets. So basically they just made this. Again, nothing on the back. It's just a blank white back. But this is the insert thing. Uh, came with it. Still a first pressing. Very, very rare because not many people wanted these just because of, uh, you know, aesthetically it wasn't pleasing. The next one is what I consider to be probably the rarest Elvis bootleg there is. And I think we can objectively say that. Uh, it's the Hillbilly Cat Live. I think we can objectively say that because there were only 189 of these pressed and it came out in 1970. So you're talking, you know, a 51 year old bootleg now. So just based on there weren't that many pressed to begin with and then it being that old, there can't be that many of these around still. Now there's a lot of counterfeits. There were two different counterfeits made by Richard Miner down in Florida. Uh, the first one is pretty easy to spot because uh, there's a little white strip that goes along the side. So there's some separation between Elvis and the end of the cover. And then the other way of telling is this isn't centered. It's all kind of centered down. So live is actually down here. And there's a pretty big space between the, it's a double album recorded at some Las Vegas shows in 1970. That's the back. And then you open it up and that's the inside of it. 
Again, only 189 of these were pressed. So because of that, and again, being as old as it is, I don't, there can't be that many of them left. Uh, this is one I actually alluded to a little bit earlier. Um, this is from Las Vegas to Niagara Falls. This is the first pressing of this one. This is the one that I thought had the sundial photo or the other one. The sundial photo is actually on the second pressing of this. This is all just paper printed. All the words and photos are printed on paper and then it was pasted onto the jacket. And then that's what the jacket looks like on the back. Uh, so there's a concert from Las Vegas and then one from Niagara Falls. Uh, sun isn't too bad on it. Um, and again, it's, I think this came out in like 74, 75, uh, came from Canada. Um, and you just don't see this one every day. It's not easy to find. And when I say not easy to find, I'm not going to be like, uh, some, there's another guy that does a, uh, Elvis record show and memorabilia. And, you know, sometimes he'll do the, go ahead, try to find it. You'll do, you're, you're not going to see it anywhere. That might be true, but if you do enough looking around and research, you can find almost anything these days. Uh, so when I say they're rare, I don't mean that you're never going to find one or, you know, I'm not going to throw the don't look because you're never going to find it because of eBay and Discogs and CD and LP for sale. And, you know, all, there's a lot of European dealers. Some of this stuff really isn't that hard to find, um, as I've discovered over the last few years. It's just a matter of taking the time to look, um, do your research, make connections with other collectors. A lot of this stuff I've been able to get from other collectors because they had multiple copies. So uh, it's just a matter of, like I said, doing your work and trying to find it. Um, yes, there are some things that you probably won't ever find. And to be honest, there's stuff that I'll probably never find as hard as I look. But, you know, I don't ever throw out the, you know, don't look for it because you're not going to find it. Almost anything is findable. So that's just my little two cents on that. Uh, the next record I have is The First Years. Now, this has come out several times in several different versions. What makes this one rare, you know, put it up there. You can barely see there's an embossing right here. There was 10,000 of these printed, and the first ones that were done have the number embossed on it. So that's what makes this one rare. Like I said, there's a lot of other versions of this out there that you see them all the time, but to find it with the little embossed number up in that corner, it's not the easiest thing in the world to come across. And this one's still actually sealed. Uh, next one, this is one of the more notorious bootlegs. This is the infamous Benny Hess first of Elvis. And as you can see, the photo on the front is really, really badly cut and pasted. This is before Photoshop, obviously, but really, really bad cut and paste. And then there's some stuff on the back about how this guy actually knew Elvis when he was just a little kid, and it supposedly contains an interview, and it's just, it's so bad. Uh, I don't, if you remember what a Jaws tape was when the movie Jaws came out in 77, uh, some disc jockeys would do a mock interview with Jaws the shark to where they would ask the, the shark a question and then it would answer with uh, just a little snippet of a song. That's what this really sounds like. And whoever he's interviewing, it's either not Elvis or it was taken from interviews much later. Uh, just, it's absolutely horrendous. Uh, but anyway, it's rare. You, just, you don't find this one very often. I was able to snap this one up, and then there's another one that I'll show you a little later that I was able to get. Uh, last time I saw these sale, they went for, I don't know, 80 or 90 bucks. Thankfully, I didn't pay anywhere close to that for these, but uh, I actually offered the seller a lot more, but he turned me down. So uh, I was the lucky person in that one. But if you can find this one, 
don't spend a whole lot on it, but definitely buy it just because of the listing experience is so bad. Uh, next one. Um, I can't actually. Uh, Elvis remembered. That's what this one is called. This was actually an RCA album that came out in Europe. And whoever did it, uh, they actually just took the recordings from the plant and made their own album. Now, what makes this one rare is uh, there were 100 copies of this made. This one's number 61. Not that that's important, but there's only 100 copies of these made. So they're not very easy to find. Just regular RCA recordings, but still. Uh, and then getting back to the infamous Benny Hess, the first years, uh, that's this album. Uh, I'll try to get a close up. That's one of the pictures that he says is him and Elvis. It looks like probably his one of his grandkids used crayons and painted that or something or drew it. Um, it says that there was a show for Meridian, Mississippi. It's not that show. Um, again, just an absolutely awful, awful album. Um, not great to listen to, not great to look at. But if you can find this album, definitely get it. One of the other things on here, uh, it says, The unsung hero of the Presley recognition, Benny Hess, the man behind the scene, recognized his talents before he was a teen. So that'll just give you a little idea of what this album is. Uh, next one is, this one's called The Best Years. And it was actually reissued as, I think either Born to Rock or I Want to Be a Rock and Roll Star. But this is how it first came out. And now they did other covers but this is the really hard one to find, you know, especially in this condition. There's a little water damage on the front, but um, overall, it's just a, in exceptionally good shape. Now, this one was counterfeited. And this is what the counterfeit looks like. So this one's actually got everything printed right on the cover. Uh, now, whoever owned this before me or somewhere down the line cut some pictures out and put them on there. That's what the back looks like. Normally, I would say that lessens the value of it, but I've seen other copies that people did this. So, you know, to me, it's still a pretty rare and valuable album. Uh, just, you know, I collect the kind of the weird stuff. So I saw that and wanted to get it which brings me to the rarest record that i have in my collection if i can get it out here i've done another video with this one on here so uh, if you saw the other one you can stop watching but this is the by far either rca or um, bootlegs that I own, and it's this one. Elvis Live at the Hilton Hotel, September 1972. Uh, this came out in the mid-70s, and it was pressed by a guy named Vince Everett from England. And he actually made a bunch of different bootlegs. Uh, and this is the one, this is one of them. I don't know that he did any 12-inch LPs. I think they were all singles and E or um, 10 inch albums or seven inch and 10 inch. Uh, the reason this one is so rare is because of what label it's on. It's called uh, Emmy Disc. I'll try to get a good picture of that. There were a couple other versions of this that came out, but this is the only one that anyone knows of that's on that particular label. He used a Sun label and 
uh, one or two others, I think. I can't remember off the top of my head which ones they are. But this is by far the rarest pressing. And I can tell you that for absolute certainty because I've messaged and chatted with the guys that wrote the Bootleg Elvis book, and none of them have ever seen this copy with that label. Um, there was He did a couple different pressings of this. On, on different kind of jackets. Uh, typically, his press runs were about 20. So this might be one of 20. It might be one of one. I don't know. Um, the other thing is they were pressed on like acetate or shellac. So it's a thicker record. They're very delicate, very prone to break. Uh, and that's what the back of it looks like. Now, later on, uh, Sam Theaker and Richard Miner got together and they reissued like 25 or different, 25 or 30 different bootlegs. And basically what they did was they just took other people's bootlegs and made their own versions of them, changed the covers, the labels, the whole bit. Uh, the first years or the, the final concert or the final year is one of them, Spotlight on Elvis, uh, Presley Mania. Those were all done by Sam and Richard Miner. Uh, Paul Dowling had nothing to do with those. Um, that was all strictly done between Sam and uh, Richard. And I bring that up because there is a 12 inch version of this one. Uh, it's a black and white cover. And then there were like a pinkish tint to one and I think a yellowish. Um, don't buy that one thinking you're getting this. If it's a 12 inch, it's a or it's just a counterfeit or a pirated version of this one. I've seen people try to get two or three hundred dollars for them. They're not worth that much. You're talking twenty or thirty dollar album tops. The other thing is, none of the songs on here are bootlegs. They're all from RCA issue, either from uh, the Madison Square Garden concert or the Aloha from Hawaii. So there's absolutely nothing new on this record. Same thing with the, the counterfeited one that uh, Sam and Richard made. Uh, so don't buy the 12 inch thinking you're buying a rare record. There was probably 3000 of those pressed. So uh, those are my rarest bootlegs that I have. And again, like I said at the top of this video, these are just the ones that I have in my personal collection. Yes, I know there are some out there that are probably more rare than what I have, or at least just as rare as what I have. I just simply don't have them. Uh, I'm always looking, would love to find some more of them. And I, I collect mostly LPs. Uh, every now and then, if I find a, a cool looking EP or single, I'll pick one up. But um, I, might, I mainly stick to uh, the long play albums. One other quick thing. Actually, I'll save that for the other one, uh, for the RCA stuff. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or questions, certainly put those in the comments. Uh, I will answer as many as I can. Uh, if you have any bootlegs that you're looking to sell, I'm always interested. Uh, if it's something I don't have, I'll, I'll work something out with you. So uh, again, hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend and be looking for my next video, which are going to be the rare RCA records that I've got.